everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, my name's Theo Randall and we're here at Theo Mio. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I haven't been here since September, so it's really lovely to come back in 2016. Even though it's incredibly hot, I couldn't believe when I got off the plane yesterday, I thought like there was heating on in the, in the airport. It was unbelievable. Now the Italians are, um, to an Italian, if you cook overcook pasta, they'll shoot you because they want to have that chewiness. And the thing about good food, it's not all about flavor, it's also about texture. So it's very important when you, I always say that, if, for instance, if you have like a, a piece of steak and it's a fillet, everyone, no, one, no one ever says, oh, it's so delicious. They always say how tender it is. Whereas if you have something like a piece of sirloin or a more tougher piece of meat, everyone's talking about how delicious it is. And it's, when you have texture and flavor together, it's a much nicer experience when you eat it. Now, when you make pasta, okay, so traditionally, what a lot of people do when they make pasta is they cook the pasta in a big pot of water, and then they cook it, and they always look on the packet, and the packet may say 10 minutes. You put your egg timer on for 10 minutes, the alarm goes off, you pick the water up, go over to the sink, and you pour the water in the colander. Yeah. The steam goes everywhere. You then pick up the, uh, the colander and you get water all over the floor. And if you're wearing sandals, you burn your feet. And then you pour the uh, pasta into the pan where you've made your delicious, let's say, tomato sauce. And that is the worst way you can cook pasta. Okay, the best way to cook pasta is to make your sauce like you've just done with the tomato and the garlic and the basil. Reduce it by half, make sure it tastes delicious. Cook, have the, the, the uh, water on. Look at the pasta packet. And let's say we're cooking linguine or spaghetti and the packet says 10 minutes. Cook it for seven minutes. Cook it for three minutes less than the packet says. So it's really al dente, it's really undercooked. Take the pasta out with a pair of tongs. If it's something like linguine or spaghetti, take out a pair of tongs and add it to the sauce. Add two or three, but leave the pan on. Don't remove the pan. And get a ladle or a spoon and take two big ladles of the pasta water and cook the pasta and the sauce together. It looks like, it'll look like tomato soup, but it's important that you start moving the pasta or stirring it, because what happens is the starch from the pasta, as it's cooking, will be released into the sauce, which will make it thicker. And the, the sauce will penetrate into the pasta and it will taste that much nicer. Whereas if you do it the other way, it's always gonna be overcooked. And also what tends to happen is when people cook pasta, they always think, oh, I'll just cook the whole packet. Don't do that. Always weigh out 100 grams per person because if you don't, you'll always dilute the sauce. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you do it that way, your pasta will always be delicious. I promise you. Okay. So pesto is very, very simple. It's garlic, sea salt, parmesan, pine nuts, olive oil, and a little mm. touch of water. Now, I, I was taught how to make pesto by a, a Ligurian chef called Lorenzo Schiaffini. And he said to me, the secret of a good pesto is not uh, the oil or the basil or the pine nuts, it's a little bit of water because what happens is when you're bashing the, the, uh, the basil you need to release the, the aroma and to do that you have to add the water which basically brings it back so you get this lovely emulsified taste. <laughs> so we'll pop the basil in, plenty of basil and then you crush the basil in the, in the, in the pestle and water and you just, can you Time to smell the basil now. So we're just going to get this sort of paste. And then once we get the, can you see that? So it's really just bashing it down so you get this paste. And then we're going to add some pine nuts. So I've got some pine nuts here. So we'll just get the basil completely mashed. But it's very important you put the garlic and the salt in at the beginning so you get that paste. If you don't put the garlic and the salt together, you end up with big chunks of garlic, which is not so nice. Okay, now we add, add our pine nuts, so we get a few pine nuts. So a nice amount of pine nuts. And then we crush the pine nuts and the basil together. And it's important again to make sure that the nuts and the basil and the, the salt are all almost pureed together. And then we're gonna add our Parmesan, so grated Parmesan cheese. Very important in this dish. You can use pecorino, but parmesan has the saltiness and the flavor is what you want. So a nice amount of parmesan in there. So my recipe would be two handfuls of basil, one handful of pine nuts, one handful of parmesan. And that's kind of the recipe. It's very, very straightforward. And then we just mash that all together. So you get this real kind of thick paste. Yeah. 
and then so keep bashing so we get this real lovely all those nuts and the basil and the parmesan are all completely mixed together so it's really really dense you see how dense that is it's really thick okay now this is the point where Lorenzo Schiaffini told me to add the water so it's very important you add the water so where is my water there we go thank you I always use this chilled water it's the best the only water you like so just keep mashing that together and then add some water good probably a couple of tablespoons of water and then just mash that all together so what happens is the water will release the basil aroma again and it will basically add the base to uh, emulsifying the sauce if i didn't add the water it would just separate and you have this very oily and the basil bits and it's very nice it's all it's all kind of cooked together so we've got the olive oil so we make sure that's all really mashed then we start adding the olive oil and we'll just stir in the olive oil and it, what will happen is it will start to emulsify and you add quite a lot of oil, it's basically an oil based sauce, so a lot of olive oil a lot more than you think and then you keep moving that oil and it together and can you smell that now, can you smell the sauce, you've got this really lovely texture and check the seasoning just taste oh my god it's delicious it's so good so you've got a lovely combination you've got the pine nuts the parmesan you can taste the basil it's a very very together kind of sauce really tastes good together right now so we're just gonna get the pesto out so we'll take some of the pesto out and we'll put it into a pan so pop that there and then put the pesto in a pan and just I love that sound. It's great, isn't it? Okay, so we don't really want to cook the pesto. Remember, this pesto sauce is kind of, you don't need to cook it because you've got, it's kind of cured in its way, the salt and the, and the garlic, and you've got the basil and the pineapple. So we just want to basically toss the hot, hot pasta through it. So once the pasta comes to the boil, we'll take the pasta, and like I said, you take the pasta into the pan, like so. And then just take it all out. So, every last bit if we can. It's like fishing for apples. <laughs> and then, so now there's quite a lot of pasta. Can you see the starch on the pasta water? So this is a good indication of how much um, that's going to, when you cook, reduce that down, it will thicken up. So we add a spoonful of the pasta water, and then we just mix that together, and we'll just. Just turn it round and then mix that all so the pesto gets absorbed into the tagliatelle and then just give it a little toss and get that starch out of the pasta and that will slightly thicken the sauce and then we just get our pair of tongs and that last little thick. This is why you're wearing aprons by the way. <laughs> okay and then a nice beautiful mound of that tagliatelle and on the plate and then we put the all those bits on top and then you finish off with a little bit of the pesto and a nice good dollop or two of the fresh pesto on top and then a little bit of parmesan and there you have fresh tagliatelle with pesto sure Thank you. Okay, Chona. <laughs> Are you on the floor? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Cool, nothing left but the taste test. More olive oil and a lot, a lot of Parmesan, I think is the secret. Delicious. So I can't wait you to come and try out Theo Mio and if you come, you probably might come across this new book of mine which I'll have some signed copies, so I do hope you can come. Awesome, I'll be looking for one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>